welcome to the Book Fix Podcast, where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. <laughs> oh my and god. And you know what? Let's start this the way that we normally do. Why don't we talk about some book tea? Book tea. Shout out to Amiri Reads yes. on TikTok and Twitter. So yeah. they, um, she is making a list of, you know, all the things that are going on in Book Talk World. And she's currently on number 64, by the way. Damn, she's she's deep in it. Yeah. And we want to talk about number 44, which is an author mm-hmm. saying, if someone rates a book three stars and lower on Amazon, should be required to give a review. Chelly, thoughts? So that means, wait, that means that you have to write yeah. a review so, if you s- scored lower than that. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you love the book. If you hated the book, you have to give a reason why. And it has to be, you know, it has to make sense. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird though? Because like, if you gave it a five, it's like I don't want to hear what you thought about I'll it. I'll go fuck. What I know. You about I it. know what I wrote is perfect. <laughs> I know it. But if you hate it, you need to tell me. I mean, I understand wanting to know what someone thought about it. If it's not, but in I've a read a way. few books. <laughs> I've read a few books where it's like it, I hate it so much that when I give it a, re- a rating, I can't imagine giving it a review. Really? I can't remember that what bad? book. I can't remember what book um, we talked about on the podcast, but I remember I gave it a one star. Was it after? And on Goodreads, I just wrote, no. <laughs> to Kill a Kingdom? No. Yeah, there we go. To Kill a Kingdom. You hated that one that much? I couldn't think of anything. I was like, I don't even know where to start. Just nope. Just That's all I got to say. Um, Honestly, <laughs> I feel like this author is giving way too much credit <laughs> to the people who <laughs> disliked your book. Because I'm imagining mm. that they think, oh, th- there must be a profound reason why. Honestly, maybe they just didn't like the writing style. Um, it could have been anything, really. But Maybe they didn't vibe with it. Yeah. And, and also, you're, this doesn't say how long they want the review to be. So I could literally give a book 2.5 and say, not for me. There you go. Yeah. That's not really <sighs> that helpful of, of a review. No, I, I I understand the frustrations of not getting a review, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I would understand why that's frustrating, but it feels kind of weird to, like, ask for one, you know? Yeah, I get it, too, though. I wonder how it was asked, actually. Like, I wonder if it was in an angry way, because I actually don't know who they're talking about. No, me neither. But, I mean, if it wasn't in an angry way, then I get it. Maybe they're just Damn. curious. Like why? What did you think? Like what was it? What was it about my book that you didn't vibe with? I need to know because mm-hmm. my Mima and Peepaw said this book was five out of five. And I trust them with my life. <laughs> well, today we are going to be talking about a one-off, mm-hmm. and it is "Make a Scene" by Mimi Grace. Yes, is it a one-off? Because um, I saw that there's a second book. Hold on, I gotta. I got to talk to the council. It's what a match. <laughs> the council. <gasps> what? But I oh my I God. think it's for another couple. I'm pretty sure. I think. There's one called. Oh, my God. Okay. The council will deliberate. Um, <laughs> Who's the council? So. <laughs> you and your cats? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Give me a moment, guys. They Give me a moment. With me. <laughs> They're all just meowing at me. Okay, we are going to hella spoil throughout this entire episode. So before we start, let me try to give a spoiler free summary about this book. So our main character is Retta and she's just having a bad freaking time. Mm -hmm. Her cousin is getting married to her ex and everyone's kind of expecting her to just like not go to the wedding. She's going to be angry. There's a reason why. Um to everyone's knowledge there's a reason why they broke up you know it's just families trying to like pry into all this shit um so in her desperation to try to just like make herself look good Mm -hmm. she's like you know what i'm gonna get myself a fake boyfriend and in her search for it she finds someone who is actually um a box a boxing teacher who is working next door to her bakery so they are going to fake date And he is going to help her get through this wedding. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. 
What does he get out of it? This Parking is... spaces. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, honestly, what an exchange. What a good exchange, honestly. You know what? Some places have horrible parking. So I understand that he's a little frustrated, too. It's so funny because the, the difference of her trying to avoid humiliation and him just wanting to get a good parking spot i know so if you are looking for a rom-com fake dating fake dating mm, that's pretty much the main two things rom-com fake dating spice um, yeah spice spice Mm -hmm. (laughs) then go ahead and check this book out but we are gonna spoil the fuck out of it so if you want to check it out first and then come back or you can just listen to our episode so before we start our episodes, Yahira and I, we don't tell each other how we feel about the books that we talk about mm-hmm. so that both of us can guess how the other person is feeling. So I'm going to guess for Yahira first. Okay. I think I think that fake dating, you know, going back to our roots, <laughs> just holds a special place <laughs> in in all of our hearts and me, you and Jesus. <laughs> We've, we've just experienced it so much in this podcast. Yeah, we really have. We were actually choosing... Oh, I did want to mention something. We were actually choosing a different book only because although we did have like a calendar set out for February on our reads, Mm -hmm. we were like, you know what? Yahira and I are hella busy. We need to find something short. And as soon as both of us kind of saw fake dating, we were like, hmm. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Because if that being said, you've been with us long enough. I feel like in the beginning, we did a lot of fake dating stories and. I don't think we were like searching for it. It just happened to be the ones we were talking about. It just happened to land on our lap. It's not my fault. Mm. (laughs) That being said, I do think you enjoyed this book. I'm not saying you're going to be like five out of five, but I I think you enjoyed reading it. Mm. That being said, I think you would give this book a 3.25 out of five. You can do that on Storygraph. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Chelly is, you know what? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, But that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say, I'm trying to play mind games with you sometimes. So sometimes, based on what you think that I'm going to rate it, I'm like, okay, Chelly's a harsher critic than me. So that means that it's probably going to be lower. Here's my guess. I think that because of our time crunch, I don't know if you were able to really enjoy the story but also i mean not a whole lot even happened in the story so i don't you did say Mm. that this is a rom-com but i don't know did it make you giggle i don't think it really did Mm. so i would guess that you would give it hmm a 2.5 yeah final answer okay final answer a buzzed in (laughs) (laughs) okay so why don't we just start talking about this book um by the looks of it it doesn't look like the next book is continuing that's what i this story by the way you don't pay attention i know you did i just wanted to double check there's three of them by the way the one we're talking about today okay okay Apparently, the council deliberated with you before they deliberated with me. <laughs> Your, <Kind> cats. <laughs> Your cats. Your <laughs> cats. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, why don't we start by talking about our main girl? Okay. So our the, main girl. Retta. So the main issue Retta. with Retta is that her cousin is getting married to one of her exes, Christopher. And obviously... Mm. She can't just not go because that's what everyone is expecting of her. They're expecting that she's going to hide, be super sad about it. And so in order to save face, she's like, okay, I have to figure it out. I have to either find someone or like find someone to pretend, right? Well, at first she didn't really understand the concept of fake dating, which I thought was kind of cute because she owns a bakery and she's there with her coworkers and they notice that there's this like 
I don't know what she is. She's like a model or something, an Instagram person. And she notices that mm-hmm. this person is pretending to just eat the food and she takes cute pictures, but then she spits it out. And even like the guy that this girl is with, like the way that they're posing is all just completely fake. As soon as the picture is done, yeah. they kind of get away from each other. And it all seems fake. And that's when she gets the idea of, oh my God, wait, that's a thing. I didn't even know fake dating was a thing. So now... By the way, you can tell in this world, apparently she just never read The Duke and I. Because, like, how do you not not know what fake dating is, girl? I know Julia Quinn doesn't exist in this world. (laughs) Why is that your example? You don't even like The Duke and I. (laughs) It is really cute, though. I wanted to mention another thing because um, as soon as it started mentioning her backstory at the beginning, Mm -hmm. the fact that her ex broke up with her. And then a month later started dating her cousin. The fact that her cousin was like, okay with it. Oh my God. (sighs) What the fuck? No offense. Dude, what type of drama, what type of drama would come out of your family if that happened? What type of drama? I would never, I I would never speak to them again. We're done. I know. I feel like there would be so much shit going down, but it kind of feels like everyone's just like, oh, look. You look lost. at the cute couple. They're so perfect. I wonder why um he didn't like you like that. I know. I know. Because obviously you there's know? something <laughs> wrong with Retta and not the, you know, not et, not her ex. Christopher. Christopher. Fuck Christopher. And <laughs> Okay, you just, you didn't give him enough hate. So I was just like, mm, I want to add to this. I want to add to this. To who, Christopher? Oh, fuck Christopher. I don't even. Yeah. I don't want to talk about Christopher. His name? His name? Bullshit name. That's not even a real name. <laughs> yeah it's a fake name i asked him he said it wasn't even his name i knew it i knew it then they start noticing that their parking spaces get taken away or start you know there's these cars there and they notice that there's this gym business or boxing gym gym i don't fucking yeah, know Yeah, it's a boxing and boxing place these guys are taking over the parking and so she starts leaving these like sticky notes for them to let them know like mm-hmm. hey bitch you mess with the wrong baker. Can you fucking imagine a baker versus a boxer? Mm-mm. Dude. Not scary at all. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I don't want to move too far ahead. But the whole idea that this fake dating started with the promise of better parking. It's so. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what I would do if someone said, you know what? If you do this for me, you never have to parallel park again. I'd be like, bitch, what do I have to do? Dude, you would do anything for that. You would do anything to not parallel park again. (sighs) Dude. So I thought it was a really cute concept Mm -hmm. that that's really what, like, this whole thing. That's all he had going for him on his side of the bargain. Yeah. So our other character is Duncan and he is the. uh... Does he own the gym? No, I just think he's one of the teachers there. Oh, okay. Because there's several teachers there. Okay, okay. And but he is not, you know, what's funny. I wish we would have gotten more a backstory of him because from what I understand is his parents are going through this like messy divorce and they're even having like a mm-hmm. divorce party. And so based on that, I can tell that he's not really down for love. And he even mentions it to Retta like, oh, I'm not really into like the long term relationships so yeah when she mentions this fake dating ruse she she kind of just accepts like oh well he doesn't really want anything serious anyway so Mm -hmm. and she didn't either because she didn't know him like that besides him being super cute yeah oh my god by the way the first time that they met so funny was because (laughs) she was supposed to go on a date with this guy whose name was like steve Mm -hmm. so when she went into a bar and saw duncan she was like oh my god steve it's me steve she looked him in the eyes and she was like steve oh my god i knew you and i would be a match made in heaven and duncan's looking at her like girl i am not your date (laughs) It's funny, too, because the whole time in the writing, it kept saying, like, this person was looking at her expectantly, Mm -hmm. but kind of, like, expecting to, like, cut in and say, hey, that's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, as a reader, you kind of know what's going on, but she just keeps going, like, oh, tell me about accounting. Tell me about numbers, bitch. Yeah, because she just keeps talking. I'm so sorry. Ah, dude. He He did feel really bad for her, though, because he could tell that she 
liked him or at least was interested in him and he was just like i think your date is actually over there and then points to like a loser oh, in the corner dude. of the room I mean, just kidding he's not a loser but and it's so funny it's so funny too because when she goes over to her date steve duncan actually has to walk over the drink that she left mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's just kind of like oh i'm so sorry that's just the guy i was sitting with just ignore him he's the not steve okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh gosh but her her date with Steve, like at that point, like before fake dating even was brought up, her date with Steve went OK, but he like completely ghosted her. Mm-hmm. So she's over here like, I need to find someone in order to go to this wedding with me. And that's when and she the was going to take kind Steve. Of forms. She was going to take mm-hmm. Steve because he was actually really good to her. Right. Yeah. No, like he was nice. But because she was so like surprised by Duncan's beauty i guess she was kind of like damn like kind of dejected about it but um it was that time when she notices that model or whatever that was like doing the fake eating and then the fake poses with her boyfriend that's when duncan comes in and they like sit down and they're talking and that's when they're talking about the parking spaces and she's letting him know like hey Mm -hmm. actually those are ours and that's when she gets the idea of like, wait, actually, yeah. you know what? I can Dude, offer it's, you it's funny. my parking if you just like fake, like if you just do these fake dates with me. And he's like, but I really like parking? how it's brought up. I really like how it's brought up because they're just talking about the parking spaces. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, random question. And you know what? You can say no. You can you can just forget I ever asked this. Mm-hmm. So can I ask something? And she, he was like, you know, I'm good at forgetting. You know, that's my thing. Go ahead. Ask me anything. And she's like, are you single? And he's like, <laughs> so thrown off. He's like, um, he goes, are like, you still? asking me out? Because you're not my type. <laughs> <And it's>, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's like, are you asking me out? And she's like, no, but like, yes, like kind of both. And he's like, okay, what, uh, you know, what the fuck are you trying to ask? Yeah. So when it's like brought up, Mm -hmm. I think he immediately says yes, if I remember correctly. He only said he only says for parking spots. He says yes yes for the parking spots, but also for the recipe of the scones that he gave that she gave him. Because remember, (laughs) she's a baker. It's so it's so Mm -hmm. funny because they're like bargaining parking spots too. He's like all three. It's like no one, two, no one. Okay, one. But you have to give me that scone recipe that you did. Yeah, because he really liked it. Because so, she she uh, left like yeah. like treats for the mm-hmm. boxing teachers, and that's when he was oh. like, "Damn, she's a baker, guys! Like for real." <laughs> it's so funny too because when he goes back to um his workplace, mm-hmm. one of his coworkers is like, "You just came back with." parking spaces and a whole ass girlfriend like what the fuck happened over there <laughs> i know they were so confused <laughs> so their fake dating mm-hmm. is super cute i think it's cute well in the beginning she was like okay let's meet up at this bowling alley and they go and i like that how different they are because red is immediately like reading off this fucking script and it sounds very robotic she's like where did you grow up <laughs> he's just like he's yeah. answering her questions but then he's looking around and seeing everyone bowling and he's like okay you know what why don't we just you know let's let's bowl you know let's bowl and then you can just send me all of those questions through my email i'll answer you back and then you can do the same for me <laughs> and she was like okay and it was really cute because as they were bowling, they were both kind of like, oh, I'm not that good. Yeah, me neither. I'm not that good either. But Reda was actually pretty good. And she gives him mm-hmm. like a tip. Like she's like, oh, do this. And, you know, maybe it'll be better. And it worked. And she was like, you know what? I'm not giving you tips anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was cute, though. That was their first outing but the whole point of it was so that they could get to know each other that way when they yes. fake date people aren't like do you <laughs> wait how did you guys meet again or do you know anything about each other you know like that whole like getting to know each yeah. other so that they are prepared if anyone asks them any questions i think it was on the same day but when they went out to eat <laughs> together and they were both like 
like, how do we like address each other yeah. yeah but they were like how do we address each other so there's like this worker there and anytime he comes around he's like okay you guys ready my it's like, girl yeah, can i get this what does my girlfriend walk or want it's like oh i'll just get the same thing my boyfriend's having and it's funny because they're like do you think it's weirding him out the, and at the one point fucking... the worker's just like you guys have to fucking eat okay like yeah i don't know what fucking shit's going on here but just you have to fucking order something well because all that they were ordering was just drinks and that's why the waiter was like um okay are you guys gonna order any food because if you're not you need to get out and then he then i forgot how the cake got, gets bring how does it get brought up again because um they are looking through the menu and the menu's hella long and at the very end it's like oh yeah get this cake if you can finish the whole thing you get a hundred dollars and your picture framed and if you don't then you have to pay ninety dollars and they were both up for the challenge they were like hell yeah cake you're a baker i'm hungry (laughs) Dude, I felt the pain. Oh my god! I I don't even know if they were it like, said how big the cake was, but damn, I felt bloated for them. I'm guessing it's. I know. I'm guessing like it's full size, three tier wedding these cake. Bitches, <laughs> <laughs> these bitches ate the whole thing, and then um they end up getting their picture taken, mm-hmm. and this is like the first time they get close that they're to like each close other. to each other. <laughs> Can I just say? This part kind of weirded me out a little bit because it was so weird. This is like my first like kind of took me out of the story. Okay. The fact that she got cold and they decided to write that her nipples got hard. Yeah. And at the same time, he was like, you're cold. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. I remember that. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, why is he looking at her boobs? Dude, I mean, I get it. It threw me off so bad. It threw me off because it was like never mentioned. And honestly, I didn't I didn't know we were reading a spice. Book. I didn't either. So, so when <laughs> when like moments like that of spice was happening, I was like, wait, 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 hold on. Where am I? It was actually pretty no, I, explicit. <laughs> and it threw me off. Yeah, I did not expect it. So when that happened, I was like, wait, is he saying that because he happens to know or did he like no, feel he it feels- when they hug? He feels his, <sighs> he feels her nipples like poking him. <laughs> oh my God. Ah, he's like, ah, damn girl. <laughs> I'm <Brenna. laughs> Poke my eye out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cute because at this moment, not counting that, at this moment too, when they finish taking the picture, they're like really close to each other. Uh-huh. And he's like, okay, I got to back up because this is like a little too much for me right now. It's hot and heavy. And mm-hmm. she she makes it worse because she like gets closer to him and is like, oh my gosh, you smell like cake. And they're really close to each oh other and looking God. at each other like really intensely. Uh-huh. So he like is planning to kiss her Mm -hmm. and she kind of realizes that too so to kind of like ease the moment and to not get that to happen she licks frosting off of him yeah and you know what i kind of wish that this moment would have actually been addressed in a realistic way because if someone just fucking licked frosting out of my face where we're pretending to date it would have taken me out i would have been like oh ew (laughs) we're not dating don't lick my face (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, that's actually really funny and no but you know what's funnier is the day afterwards she kind of just like brought it up in a way that was like yeah i licked his face because i knew he was gonna kiss me so like obviously i licked his face yeah it's like what oh my that's God. not <sighs> if you guys were dating then that would make sense but you guys aren't dating oh. you're barely getting you to really know each dodged other. a bullet there retta <laughs> yeah i like poked his eye out with my tit and then i licked him oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my know. gosh um but after this they go on their um date it was like a carnival i guess yeah that one was cute i don't have much to say about that one except it was cute i like that the both of them weren't really that down for the roller coaster because you know how normally it's always the guy who's like don't worry babe you see these big ass muscles oh i'm gonna keep you down but no they were both equally nervous to be on the roller coaster yeah i thought that was really that cute. that was cute um when they 
when they went to the wedding, mm. I kind of like knew how this story was going to play well, there out. Well, it was a, I, I knew, a like, wedding reception, no? Yes, you're right. When they went to the wedding reception, um, and he finally realized that the whole reason she wanted this fake dating to happen was mm-hmm. because the person who was getting married was her ex. Because mm-hmm. she, I she kind never of told him that. No, I kind of expected more jealousy at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just kind of weird that he was just like, oh, okay. You know, like he even made like a mental note. Like, I'm going to ask her about this later because everyone here seems to be saying, oh, I didn't know you'd come. And he was noticing this. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of sad that they never had that conversation before their feelings were realized. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. And I, I don't know. I hate that he figured it out based on like you know someone just telling him at the wedding reception and because everyone was looking at her expectantly right like waiting to see if she has a certain reaction to see that her cousin is really marrying her ex and Retta I mean she was pretty much over it but of course like this is gonna be weird for anybody so realistically of course she's uncomfortable but I wish that he would have brought it up but the moment that really freaking like messed me up was when Because at this point, they're already, like, kind of messing around a little bit. Nothing had happened yet, but they were messing around. And so they're dancing, and she starts flirting with him. And he thinks to himself, well, if I'm only here to help her forget, then you know what? I'm going to do the best I can. And so he's, like, ready to take her to bed because he thinks, like, oh, she just needs a distraction, right? Because she's so in love with Christopher. And Christopher is obviously such a great guy. Mm -hmm. i freaking hated that (sighs) yeah i wish there would have been more communication between both of them about this whole thing well not just that but but, damn but i i wish that there would have been more between retta and christopher for him to make that conclusion that oh she's still in love with him you know like i wish something would have happened because there wasn't really much there Mm -hmm. Like, uh, even if it was just, like, a misunderstanding of, like, him seeing both of them talk, Mm -hmm. and I'm not even talking about, like, the thing at the end, I wish that would have happened throughout, where she just, like, wants to pull Christopher to just have a conversation. Her closure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she needed that closure, and so Mm -hmm. she doesn't really get it until the end. I still can't get over how fucking unsupportive her family is. It's not that they're unsupportive. It's just that they don't fucking care that this happened. No. I just think that's so weird. Like, none of them... I don't know. None of them finds it weird that her cousin is marrying her ex. Like, really? Y'all are fake. My family would... Oh, I hope they (laughs) got me up. Damn. You know what? Let's let's put them to the test. (laughs) But the only real one out here, the only real one... Mm is fucking um retta's grandma oh yeah honestly she's so blunt (laughs) (laughs) so um when it comes to the actual wedding um they have to travel to uh uh, the grandma's they're supposed to stay there for three days Uh and it's like after this wedding both of them know that they are like just they, there's no plans like you know they don't know if they're gonna stop talking to each other but if they they're gonna stop dating both kind of expect it though yeah but they both don't want it to end mm-hmm. which is the sad part and mm-hmm. it sucks too because at, by this point they've already had sex with each other they already like without like prompting it they kiss each other or they'll hold hands and it's very like oh it's just something that naturally came to me it wasn't that i was trying to show anyone yeah but it's you know still like throws them off though when it happens they're both kind of like oh okay you know yeah oh but i fucking love the grandma and like that talk that she has with duncan where it was like well what are your plans with her and he's like very honest with like i just really care about her You know, Uh and it's like, this fucking sucks because I know, I know the beats of these types of stories. Something's going to happen and they're not going to end up together for two seconds. It's going to make me sad. I just kind of wish that the stakes were a little bit higher because I understand that Duncan doesn't really believe in love based on how his parents are because his parents are having this divorce party, but they're also still kind of messing around with each other. So he's like, you guys are not good for each other. Like, you need to just end it right so i understand that oh, but it's not really yes. i don't know like it's not really explicitly said that this is why he doesn't want a relationship because he's scared of 
you know, experiencing the same I'm, thing as his parents. Yeah. And then for Greta, I feel like I don't know why she wasn't just honest with with um Duncan. Like I understand Duncan's side a little bit more because he thinks that she's still in love with Christopher. But with Retta, I'm like, I don't know why she doesn't just tell Duncan how she yeah. really feels. Cause there was a point where l- like you said, Duncan has this whole um divorce celebration that he has to get ready for for his parents Mm -hmm. and at one point he thinks to himself like is this something that i should invite retta to because technically i don't have to there's no point but she would make it better Mm -hmm. i kind of wish that this whole story had been both of them like inviting each other to these things and seeing like (laughs) yeah seeing like you know what they're they're not a perfect person but i realized that like my life feels better when they're with me yeah. like i wanted them to have that type of realization like that should even if been... it's uh, and god oh sorry no, no, go ahead. and i didn't want it to seem like oh she's here because she fixed me just as a i just wanted her here because i love her mm-hmm. and i want her to be with me yeah i wanted that but it never happened and even when um he had mentioned this thing that he had to do the divorce um Party. I guess speech that he had to give. Yeah, I, I it felt like such a passing thing because mm-hmm. Retta was just like, "Oh, just write it in your notes app. That's what I would do." Okay, let's get ready for this. It like was such a pass, a little side combo they had. Yeah, and then you just reminded me where he is uh, going through something emotionally because he goes to I don't know what he drops off with his dad, but then he sees his parents together and he can tell that they were messing around with each other. He gets in the car and yeah. then he's like driving away yes. and obviously he's yes. upset by it and Retta is like asking him like she genuinely seems interested in like what's happening and he starts being vulnerable with her but the moment gets cut off so fast because her car was t- was towed away or something. I don't know. But I was like, they never get back to this conversation. Like, it never gets brought up again. And he knew that they weren't going to come back to it either. Yeah. I did kind of appreciate, though. I wish that they would have c- came back to the conversation. Mm-hmm. But I did appreciate that when she was walking off, she did have to kiss him as a, like, you know, I'm here for you. And then she left. Yeah. But, but they never talked about it. But to him, and, like... Because I think in that in that point, it was in his point of view. To him, that kiss yeah. was symbolizing like, oh, this conversation is over. It's like saying like goodbye to him, you know? So <sighs> it's not really like, oh, how cute. It's more of like, damn, like he's really going I through. He's it. really going through something and you're just going to like not go back mm-hmm. to it. You're just going to let him suffer, I guess, in well, silence. Why don't we talk about, you know, the best part of the whole book? Mm-hmm which is the wedding <laughs> and the fact that her fucking cousin mm. whose fucking name I don't I remember, can't remember her name either she was taking forever you know all these people are at the wedding freaking Retta's like everyone look at my boyfriend this is Duncan you know and like, she's you know they're there that's the whole reason she's like pose 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. but they're at this wedding and um they ask her to drop off earrings to her cousin Mm -hmm. and she goes over to see her cousin in her wedding dress, but she has obviously been crying. Mm -hmm. And Retta is just like, Hey, you good? um, (laughs) Here are these. You want me to glue your lashes again? I don't, I don't know what you want me to fucking do. I know because her lashes were literally falling off. Yeah. And her cousin's like, are, is this weird to you? And Retta's like, yeah, it's fucking weird to me. Yes, it is. Like, how has it taken you this fucking long to ask that? And it's frustrating it's like, yeah. because why did it take her until the wedding day Ugh. for her to consider her cousin's feelings about her marrying her ex? Like, it pissed me off because even Retta, it, it threw her off, but she was immediately honest about it. And she was like, yeah, finally getting that closure. You know, like she's finally like getting her feelings out about the situation. And I think she even tells her, right? Like, oh, it's not like I like him like that anymore. But like there's so many guys Mm -hmm. out there. And why would you have to pick Mm -hmm. him? I fucking hated that scene Mm -hmm. so much because it it's so like it's at the very very end of the book and it's like how have you guys never talked about this yeah how to have you guys seen each other at outings at parties and like functions Mm -hmm. and you've never fucking had this conversation it's so messed up of the 
fucking cousin to be like it doesn't bother you like does it bother you does here help me with my problems that, what was it it's kind of like with uh brad when he left uh jennifer aniston for angelina mm-hmm. angelina jolie and i don't remember who said this but i remember someone like retelling the story of how he used to make uh jennifer aniston these milkshakes Mm -hmm. and now it's like he's making it for Angelina Jolie and it's the same thing with the cousin she's gonna be like I know he used to make you these amazing milkshakes but now he makes them for me and I'm sorry about it yeah and he like refuses to make them for anyone else just for like me that doesn't bother you doesn't bother you (laughs) like Mm. think about it it was so frustrating I I'm glad though because what I thought was gonna happen at this point Mm. was I thought that Retta was gonna go and run and find Christopher Mm. I'm glad that her first initial thing was like okay I gotta talk to duncan talk to my parents talk to you know i'm glad it wasn't her trying to solve the issue because this isn't her issue to solve you know yeah it pisses me off though because it's like why did you do this to your cousin if at the end of the day you're just gonna run away yep yeah she goes to like another country too right and it never really specifies (sighs) why like she just got cold feet and i get that but like please tell me why like did he do anything was he just a loser i don't (laughs) Dude, I have no idea because I'm going to speed through this a little bit. Mm. But the wedding is basically called off and um Christopher Retta is the one who and has Duncan to tell everyone too. He's like, "Sorry guys, wedding is off." N- no wedding today. Did I say wedding today? I meant wedding hooray. It might happen later. <laughs> it might happen later. I'm not wearing <laughs> a suit the- actually. <laughs> The wedding is called off. Duncan, Retta, and the grandma go back to, like, the grandma's place. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have pizza. And they're planning this whole thing. But Duncan's like, there's no point in me to stay. He's like, why am I here? Um, (laughs) It's so sad. And it sucks, too. Because you can tell that Retta wants to say something. But she's not going to. Because at the end of the day, they're not even dating. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. But, like, stuff was happening. Like. They were flirting, they were kissing, they were fucking, like, they know that the other one obviously has feelings for the other, you know? You know what, too? The grandma notices and, like, immediately is like, I'll make you soup or whatever, like, to comfort her. And then Retta starts crying. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of mad that he disappointed the grandma. I know! After specifically telling the grandma that he would never hurt her. I know! I kind of wanted him to, like, find the grandma and be, like, you know, like in a search for her because you remember how she had brought up like when she broke up with christopher she kind of like hid out at the grandma's place Mm -hmm. i thought it was gonna be like okay i have to look for her where the fuck could she be Mm -hmm. i wanted him to like confront the family and be like that's my girl this is what we were doing but that's my girl like i wanted that but that it was never really better. brought up again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have been better. And, and I actually expected the same thing. Like, maybe not seek out the grandma, but, like, apologize to Retta by apologizing to the grandma, you know? Because, obviously, the grandma was so overprotective of her. But that never I'm surprised happened. he didn't turn back. I know. It was really sad, actually. Because he kind of was just like, mm, you know what? I'm going to go because there's no point in me staying here. Sorry. And like they both realize too late that they like each other. Mm-hmm. And they're like, damn, now I got to figure out how to confront them. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate that Christopher went to go talk to Retta. Do you? I hate that shit. I didn't. Yes. Because I didn't hate it that much. I mean, it wasn't great, but <sighs> I didn't hate it that much. But for not talking at all ever Mm -hmm. and to be like, what did my babe say about me? Sorry, I don't mean to confuse you, Retta. I know I used to call you babe. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) that's so sad. I I don't know. I I can't. uh, They never had anything. That's true. You know, like maybe I I wish that more would have been added for that to make sense for him to come up to her. Yeah. Because all it was was like, you talked to her last. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. Like, I wish that maybe he would have been trying to maintain some semblance of a friendship with Retta throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And maybe him just like reaching out and like texting her or whatever. She didn't have to answer back, but then it would make more sense for him to just show up and be like, is this how I made you feel? (laughs) Be honest. Yeah. And yeah. And even with like Duncan walking in on them. They weren't, no, he didn't walk in on no. them talking, but he saw, he saw them leaving. Uh, Christopher leave. Mm. I kind of wish that he would have heard something and misunderstood 
Because the fact that he looked at it and was like, oh my God, they still have feelings for each other. Yeah. Oh my God, now I got to compete with another man. But I'm going to win, bitch. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, they end up talking again, um, Duncan and Retta, but it's cut short because her cousin's giving birth Mm -hmm. or her sister. I don't fucking know. They go, the baby is like coming out and the sister or cousin is like, whoa you two are together i thought you were fake dating crazy while she's fucking pushing you know like it's like again one of those moments where like another character is the one who has to make both of them see that they both really love each other because she was like i mean i'm so glad that it worked out for the both of you because i could tell that you guys were actually really in love with one another but you guys are both so dense about it and she's like mid you know mid push i know sorry guys let me just push out this baby real quick no but she's still talking i I kind of like that in Duncan's point of view. I think it was in his point of view where it was like they had to cut her off because it's like, I don't want her to reveal what I'm going to plan to tell Retta. Like, I would rather tell her before this person reveals how I feel, you know, so they were like avoiding her question. Yeah. And then I also liked how the cousin, sister, whatever she was, revealed that Christopher was Retta's ex. And Duncan yeah. didn't react or he didn't say anything about it. And Retta looks at him and she's like, oh, you knew. And he was like, yeah, I've known. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But th- that was kind of it. Nothing else was brought up after that. It was just like, yep. Yep. <laughs> like, yep that's. Um... <laughs> I-, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, baby is born, but also new relationship is born because <laughs> more importantly like, the relationship I, is reborn <laughs> it's funny the, the, they're having their moment and they're just like you know what i've always loved you i've always <laughs> loved you i love you too babe they're kissing the cousin's like oh my god i'm gonna name my first child after you i want this child be, to be named Reda duncan it's gonna be red unkin red duncan <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> the, the doctor's like are you fucking sure red duncan it is okay go get your paperwork or whatever <laughs> let me sign this real quick <laughs> red duncan <laughs> let me push out a second Dunk-etta. baby because the other one could be the other yeah the other one could be duncan <laughs> <laughs> it's, t- it's twins i fucking hate that there was a fucking baby being pushed out during this scene i oh what yeah. the fuck yeah, you know I had the exact too? same reaction. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? And why is she here? Pretty... Why is she here? It ends abruptly, right? Yeah, it does. Wait, are you saying why is she here for the baby? Yeah. Because same. I was like, why the <laughs> fuck is she here? Can't she be like outside? I don't know. You know what? Maybe it is her sister. It's so funny. This kind of reminds me of um, that one video with the guy who's jealous of his best friend's baby. Oh, my it's God. Like, what, you were all over him and you've known him for, what, maybe a year? <laughs> Not even. It was like six months. It was like, and you've known me for 14 years and you're going to pick that baby over me? I fucking love you know, those videos. You know, babies have like you know blank stares Resting sometimes and the baby's just staring at him it's like what you want to fight like, bro someone hold someone hold that baby back <laughs> take a picture it'll last longer <laughs> that's gonna be me when you have kids i'm gonna be like writing the square <laughs> up put that fucking baby away it keeps looking at me funny <laughs> who told you to bring your baby jelly <laughs> <laughs> put that thing away <laughs> Jake. Oh my just god, kidding, dude. You know, it sucks <laughs> because I know we haven't revealed our scores yet. I I actually genuinely liked like the premise of this story, mm-hmm. but like the execution of it wasn't what I thought it would be. No, I f- and I don't know. I feel like it was kind of all over the place. Right? Mm-hmm. But the the idea of it was cute. Yeah. Like the idea of them just doing this for parking spots, which by the way, were only brought up at the end. Like once. And it was like a side, like a very like, it started with parking spots, babe. <laughs> but it ends with me and you. It's kind of like, it's kind of. <laughs> I, I wish there was more. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't really like that. The whole thing with the parking spots. I wish it was would have been something more serious. Mm. Worth your wild. What if it's five parking I spots? I kind of wish. Would it have been worth it then? Yeah, yeah, The whole parking, the whole <laughs> parking lot, actually. <laughs> give me, give I, me the whole parking structure, please. All three floors. I kind of wish that <laughs> it would have been like a mutual kind of thing where she needed Duncan 
to fake date for the wedding and Duncan needed her to fake date for the divorce party thing. Like, mm. I wish that would have been so the like, exchange. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me see if I'm hearing you correctly. You just wanted to read Spanish love deception again. Is like what it sounds like. What do you mean? <laughs> That's Spanish love deception. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, because she needed it for the wedding and he needed it for that whatever thing he did. That was an auction. That wasn't that serious. A divorce <laughs> party. Is, I know, literally. <laughs> a divorce party is pretty serious. Yeah, but that's not it even, was never brought up. I hope that's not really a thing because that's weird. I feel like some people do it. I feel like I would be down to do it with like my friends, not with the, not with my ex, <laughs> not with the other person. <laughs> we had a good run, right? <laughs> I feel like I just make a speech and roast them. <laughs> Everyone, put your hands together for this piece of shit. Oh <laughs> exactly that's how it would have been oh my god i wanted to like this story though i really did mm. but i was i don't know it just kind of threw me off it's not like i hated hated it no. because i actually really did like retta yeah the spice kind of threw me off the spice wasn't bad <laughs> they, though which i think was what threw me off wasn't. too was the fact that i was like okay it's actually written pretty well it, but I, I really was yeah. not expecting spice in this book yeah, I wasn't either. Oh my god. Um did you have any other like likes or dislikes that you wanted to bring up? Um I I feel like we've already talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Wow. Wow. You <laughs> you really said let's just put this to rest. <laughs> let's just let's just get to <laughs> overall thoughts. I mean, unless there's something you want to bring up. No, we pretty much brought up what I wanted to bring up too. You know what? Wow. It's funny how she like really sometimes I'll best. have certain thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I have certain thoughts about like a story because I will be honest with you. When we started filming this, I didn't know where I felt or where I stood with this story. Mm. But after talking to you, I'm like, yep. <laughs> I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at No, now. I kind of already knew um, when I finished this book. Because you know how some of us, see, we have to wow. like sit with them for a bit. Mm. I feel like this one. I you you just... sat. <laughs> <laughs> I sat enough, actually. I'm standing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, well, why don't you start with your overall thoughts? So my overall thoughts of Make a Scene is that I agree with you where I really liked the premise of the story. I really liked that she was a baker and that he was a boxer. Um, but while... I was, you know, getting into the story. I feel like certain things weren't really developed enough. Like, for example, Duncan's backstory. I wish I would have seen a little bit more of why he was so afraid to be in this long-term relationship with Retta. And then with Retta, I just, I did like her character overall. But I feel like I would have liked to, I would have liked to see more of her too. I don't know. Because even her relationship with Christopher... Mm, I mm. still don't even really understand like what really happened between them or if it was even that serious. But like I already said, I wish that the whole fake dating would have been something a little bit better than parking spaces. I mean, I agree with you that it's kind of funny, but not that funny. Mm. Like I didn't laugh. <laughs> I mean, I didn't giggle. It wasn't ha ha funny. It was like a little giggle at most. It was like a, a a sharp exhale kind of funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, were, were you there when I was reading it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wish that we would have seen more of their relationship together because I feel like you and I have brought this up. I'm not sure if it, if on the podcast, but a lot of the times when I read romance, I ask myself, do I feel like this couple is actually in love? And I wasn't really feeling that with them. Like, I think they they had really cute moments together. But when he told her that he loved her, I was like, really? Really? Are you sure? I'm not even sure why. When, like, the scene before, he was still kind of like, you know, thinking about his parents and their whole divorce party. I just I just really wanted more from this book. I think that I liked the idea of it and I liked certain moments of it, but it just wasn't that good in my opinion. Like I feel like it's kind of forgettable. 
Out of all the fake datings that we've read, it's a little forgettable. I would rate it a 2.25. Wow. Damn, dude. Okay. I I could see why you rated it that. What did I say? You were going to give it a 3? Yeah, I think so. I thought I thought you were going to like this a lot more than you I did. Think you said, but I, I think I, you said a 3.25. Yeah, because Storygraph could do that. Yeah. Shout out to Storygraph. <laughs> I agree with your sentiment, though. Like, I expected more out of this story. There are two things that I didn't really mention. One of them was the fact that she immediately started... Or went on a second sta- date with Steve. Oh my god! After the wedding, that's what I forgot about. <laughs> I it kind of felt very weird. Like it felt like he was just there to progress the story. Story. You know forward what's so funny? Because I he was thought like, about you. You know how you hate when there's another love interest that's introduced. The only reason is just yes. like you just said to move the plot forward. And I literally thought about you when Steve came up again because when Steve and her went on that date, he was just kind of like, "Girl, I know you don't love you don't love this that we're here together. You you're in love with that other oh. guy." And really he just turned He literally called me Duncan getting out the car. I know. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> and then the whole like the whole thing was just weird because he turned into a therapist therapist for her and i hated that yes. i really really hated even that. even though they this is the only the second time they've met mm-hmm. but she was like but he was really sweet about it he was listening the whole time mm-hmm. and i'm like that's weird that that's weird. weird that you just like opened yourself up to this stranger yeah <sighs> and it was never brought up again duncan never figured out yeah. like it, it was like are okay they, are, that's are they even friends oh my god It was weird. I thought that that was weird that they threw that in. I wanted more out of this story. And can I just say the title? I don't get it. Oh, my God. (laughs) You are literally (laughs) in my brain. You're in my cabeza. I swear to God. I didn't want to bring that up because I was like, maybe I missed it. I'm not sure. But I was thinking that when I was listening to the audiobook, I was like, I feel like the title makes no sense for this book. What scene? What is Senna? There's no... She didn't want to make a scene. That's the whole point. If she wanted to make a scene, she would have been like, you know what? Fuck you, Christopher. And fuck you, whoever, whatever your name is. (laughs) It should have said make a scene and it should have had a picture of both of them kissing while her sister's giving birth in the background. Oh, like I feel like I would have been like, okay, that's a scene. And the baby's just like, you know, like (laughs) pointing at them. (laughs) That's who I'm named after. (laughs) Don't get her. <laughs> but I, I, I am so disappointed. I was expecting more. I will be honest. I was the one who recommended this one. Yeah. And this just goes Thank down you. in the list of <laughs> things I've recommended that always fucking suck. Hey, I don't always have hits either. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> um, I have nothing against the dialogue though, like the style of writing, Mm -hmm. the spice. I thought it was good. I just thought the execution of the story, like there was just things that were lacking. And I feel like if they were added, then maybe the story would be better. Yeah, I agree with you. But um I I would be interested to read like another, but like on my own time and not on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Just to see like if there is another one that's like a like a bop. You mean from this author or (laughs) From Mimi Grace. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, that being said, um, I I don't think it's forgettable. I just don't think it's great. Because, I mean... You're when not going to remember this story. I'm going to ask you about this story in a month. And you're going to be like, huh? After... <laughs> what the fuck is a Duncan? <laughs> like Duncan Donuts? <laughs> you're going to... Every episode for the next year, I'm going to be like, this is just like Mimi Grace. Don't you remember? No. <laughs> when Duncan and Retta were making out in the delivery room? <laughs> no, you will not. I... You're such a liar. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not the greatest, but I don't think it's the worst. I didn't say it was I the think... worst. <laughs> I think overall I would give this... What did you give it? Because I think I'm about to give it the same rating. I'm going to give it a 2.25. What? (laughs) Wait, really? (laughs) Oh, my God. We need to stop 
being so in sync it's kind of weird <laughs> i know it's scary it's me off. what are we no who are we i don't know i don't know who am i without you don't make it weird oh my god wait babe <laughs> <laughs> stop don't call me baby you're making me fluster <laughs> dude we gotta stop joking like this. i know we do it's kind of funny though <laughs> it is kind of funny also kind of romantic yeah. But I don't know what to make of that. Me neither. We'll talk about it later. We'll discuss later. <laughs> softest, Let's discuss yeah. in the, on our Patreon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, thank you so much for all of you who are listening. If you are listening to us in audio form, whether that be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon Music, anywhere you get your podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can leave us a rating of uh, five stars, that would be that would make so such nice. A we would really, really appreciate it because I think it definitely boosts us up. And it puts us in people's yeah. recommendations. So that would be really, really nice. It also takes two seconds to do. So while you're listening to my sweet voice, you can just be doing it right now. Go ahead. Five stars. That's all you got to do. Um, you can also leave a review. And if you want to please recommend us to your loved ones, your friends, your family, that makes a huge difference because the best way to get exposure is through word of mouth. If you are watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. If you can like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We post every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. If you want to support us more, you're like, I don't can't get enough of these girls. These Duncan loving girls. <laughs> don't get us. <laughs> <laughs> these don't get us. I want to support uh -huh. them. Why don't you join our Patreon? Because um, although it's fresh, it's a newborn baby. Don't get <laughs> oh my us. God. It's new. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, we do want to try forming a book community. Also with making a book community, we also want to involve our listeners with the kind of episodes that we're making. So through our Patreon, you know, you have more access to us and you're able to give us recommendations on what you would like us to talk about. So you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix. Thank you. <laughs> so usually when we end these episodes, we read a rating of the book we just talked about and it's based off of a dice roll that Yahira gives us off of an app that she has mm -hmm. if it lands on an even number we read a positive review of the book but if it lands on an odd number we read a negative negative review of the book we don't talk about these reviews we're not connected to them at all it's just out in the open out out in the wind yeah so why don't you give us a number okay we got a five. That is an odd number. So we are going to go ahead and read a negative review. This review comes from Danny Reed, who gave it a 2.5 out of five. It says, I really wanted to love this. It had so much potential. A girl procuring a fake date with a hot gym owner to go to her ex's wedding. Sign me up. Sadly, this seriously fell flat for me. The book just felt super rushed and so many things were introduced only to go nowhere. The ending especially wrapped up way too fast to be satisfying. This book could easily have been 50 to 100 pages longer and it seriously would have benefited, giving the author more space to tie everything together nicely. Also, I feel like the author failed to deliver the drama one would expect from a premise this juicy. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Bye. I think your thing is like, your thing is like breaking what? up. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like breaking. Well, the mic's fine. I think it's my ear. I think so too. Well, now you sound fine, but for a while there, it was like sounding like you were underwater. Cute. She's going for a I'm swim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just like taking the mic into the pool. Oh my god. <laughs> Me too. Twins. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Add a water sound effect here. <laughs> <laughs>